This meeting is being recorded. So Thomas, in the meantime, maybe I can add one yeah. thing to this mm -hmm. discussion of the mm -hmm. hybrid thing. So we, we, we have time after after four o'clock. Yeah, yeah. Oh, is it up already? Oh, okay. It's half hour. I'm going to be long So I would like to introduce you, Ru, Jen, and uh, it's like uh, Juan that uh, he spent some time here before actually um, coming very briefly. You came for Double Tap Read workshop, I think it was 2017. Yes. And so I um, liked uh, you, Ru, how he was asking and, and so on, so I had a good impression. And I had a chance then to um, visit him in Taiwan at his uh, institute, TARI, which is kind of the Taiwanese USDA, a um, little smaller, I guess. And uh, there was a symposium at the uh, university, NTU, where I was invited. And so I could um, learn a little bit about um, maize and that it can be very rainy at your location. You had actually flooding tolerance trials there. Um, and so that was a good uh, way to get to know uh, Yuru, and when he applied in 2019 to come here, um, then he was a, an excellent candidate. So I think these internships are showing up before, and knowing a person was really uh, important for me. And so with that. Uh, thanks, Thomas, introduction. So today, uh, I'm Yuru, so I'm today going to uh, share my research project. And since the uh, last two weeks, uh, Wuxi ha had been interviewed the uh, HAPO inducer pretty well. So today I just focus on the performers and the genomic selection in HAPO inducer BH population in my research project. So in my research, research project, I'm focused on the inducer uh, genetic improvement and the line development. So for the inducers, there is a critical trait, like, uh, uh, for example, the haploid induction rate, HIR, uh, we would like to accumulate the favorable allele in the population from 10% uh, to 50%, and hopefully we can get 20% uh, in the near future. So once we accumulate the febrile allele in the population, we want to fix them in the elite lines. So all the purpose, all the purpose of the elite lines were used for the uh, breeding industry to improve the efficacy of the corn breeding. On the other hand, uh, for the ac academic, uh, we can use those uh, elite lines for the study for the study about the biological mechanism in haploid induction ability. So inducer is uh, played a, plays a critical role in double haploid technology in maize. So in this technology, there are four steps. Uh, the first step is use inducer to close with your uh, material, breeding material to have the haploid seed. So the second step is to use the purple color on the endos on the endosperm and the embryo to, to sort out the haploids from the F1 seed. So the third step is uh, uh, use cultural treatment on the haploid seedling to make it have the uh, chromosome doubling, then transplant the haploid plant in the field. So once the haploid plant have the pollen shedding, it could sell it to have a DH population. So the critical uh, trait for the haploid for the haploid inducer is the haploid induction rate. How many haploid seeds could be obtained from the F1 kernels? On the other hand, on, on the other hand side, uh, the hap, uh, this ratio can be defined as the haploid inducibility from the donor perspective. Okay, so uh, about the haploid induction rate, there are two major genes has been uh, cloned. The first one is maternity on chromosome one. Then the second one is maize DMP on chromosome 
uh, nine. So on the multilinear genetic background, uh, it will have about 3% induction rate. So if you uh, cooperate with the maize DMP together, the induction rate could boost to uh, 8% on average. So most of the most modern haploid inducers were over 8% induction rate on average. But in my research project, uh, we would like to increase the induction rate higher and higher. So we would like, we, we have to um, uh, accumulate more federal uh, modifier in our genetic, uh, uh, in our breeding population. So I start my research project in uh, 2019 summer. So at that time I have uh, eight from the lines which are derived from SPBB lines and the RWS. And RWS is a well-known uh, inducer, modern inducers uh, derived from University of Hoham in Germany. And those eight from the lines are, uh, uh, they all have a uh, matrilineal and maize DMP fixed in their genetic background. So I create a uh, 28 F1s by half divial uh, mating design. So you can see from this picture, all, all of uh, A from the lines, they have uh, different agronomy trade performers in the field. And also I, I use their genetic uh, SNP uh, genotype to, um, to make this circular dental ground to cluster their uh, relationship. So it can divide by uh, A and B, A, A and B and C group here. So as you know, uh, two, uh, two years, uh, two, two weeks uh, ago, we should mention that we can obtain haploid, inducer haploids by inducer, uh, by C1 inducer. The, the the trade is the trick is use this C1 I uh, transcription uh, inducer. It has the C1 I uh, transcription factor will replace the R1 gene expression. So we can set that the inducer haploids out from the F16. So it can accelerate uh, the accelerate to fix the favorable allele of the induction rate. Also the short term, the inducer uh, breeding process. So two years later, in 2021 20, uh, summer, we got a bunch of inducer DH population and plant them in the field. So in this picture, you can see uh, the plants within the row, they, they all homogeneous performers. But between lines, between rows, they are they show a complete difference. Okay, and then uh, since I since we have a, a DNA technology in inducer development, so we can have a, a lot of inducer DH lines. But with a limit budget, we cannot plant all the plan all the DH line in the field. Also during the pandemic, we, we have the limit uh, uh, worker help us to measure the, 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 the plant and uh, the agronomy trade and the, doing the pollination during the hot season. Also, we don't have the robots to measure all the DH line, of course. So all the measurement will were measured by hand. So it's kind of, it's kind of uh, time consuming and laborious in the field. So how to deal with this uh, limitation? That is, we, we, um, we are doing uh, use genomic selection in halfway inducer breeding. The scheme here is that in the DH, uh, uh, in the halfway DH population, it is our breeding population. We do the, the genotyping by genome-wise marker uh, 
uh, have the genome-wise name markers genotypes here. But we subside uh, the individual from the breeding population to have a chaining population. So in the chaining population, we we have the we have their phenotypes and genome-wise name marker genotype to chain the GS model. Then we can get the estimate uh, state effect. So then, so then we can use uh, genome-wise name markers uh, name marker genotype as a, as features. So this matrix. Uh, uh, ma ma manipulate with the markers effect, we, then we can get a genome-wide estimate of uh, breeding value. So use the GBV value to as a, as a, as a, a as a criteria to to ranking the individual in the breeding population with higher performance and lower performance. So this slide is showing that uh, I random uh, sampling the, uh, the individual within family to have a 158 DH line in the chaining population. Then phenotype then in the field have uh, these six traits, upper induction rate, inducibility, and plant high tensile size, and cross compatibility. Uh, of uh, GA1S and their root color. Also about their uh, phenot uh, genotyping, uh, we use uh, dot six in CIMIT. So the raw data we get is about uh, 31K SNPs. But after Beagle version five imputation, filtering out the minor allele frequency less than 5%, eventually we have the 7.2 case need for genomic selection. Okay, so this is my field layout. So uh, we have two replicates planting in the field last summer. This is the chaining population. So in the field, we measure their agronomy trade performance and do the test cross with the F1 uh, donor to uh, to figure out their haploid induction rate. Also use the C1 inducer to have the haploid inducibility of those DH line. So the rest of uh, DH line we develop is in the breeding population. Here is showing here. We just increase them and without any phenotyping. So here is the performance of the individual in the training population and the layer genomic prediction results. So here shows that about the halfway induction rate, the process heritability is about uh, 70% and the entry mean heritability is about 81%. Accuracy is 0.9, it's quite high here. But in the, uh, the, the distribution of the phenotype uh, of the haploid induction rate phenotype, you can see here is a uh, skew here. There are more uh, lower uh, performers of individual in the chaining population compared with the higher performers uh, lines here. And in the genomic pr prediction, here, the prediction uh, ability of the entry mean base is about uh, is about uh, 0 0.6, a uh, point of uh, 49 uh, prediction ability. But uh, but here I, I'm showing you that because we would like to know about the single river case of a uh, black one and black two uh, data set. How is how are their uh, genomic uh, prediction ability? So overall, uh, it's lower than entry but they all they, they still show a reasonable uh, prediction ability over um, 
0.45 here. Okay, okay and then I, I forgot to say I use uh, 10 repeat, 10 repeats, uh, 10 four cross validation by our, our block model to have a prediction ability. Okay, about the frame height here showing uh, the heritability is similar with high point induction rate and the prediction ability is similar with uh, induction rate as, as well. But the distribution of the, the frame height in the training population looks like looks more like a normal distribution. Yeah. Then th this this figure is uh, about the accumulate uh, growth in degree day at flowering time. And the heritability is higher than than and plant high and induction rate. Also, the pre, uh, prediction ability is 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 six point uh, six eight here. So uh, it means that we uh, this trade is easier to predict on uh, uh, their their very uh, how to say the selection accuracy is higher than plant high and induction rate. In DH uh, in half point user population. Okay, so here is a result of uh, after uh, result of uh, after 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 okay after after <laughs> after doing the genomic prediction um material model we can uh, use the GBV value in those uh, 379 DH uh, in the breeding population and use the GBV as a, as a rank, uh, to rank the order of the inducer individuals here. So here uh, we can based on the GBV to select the lower and the higher superior offspring in, uh, I should say, uh, superior DH line in, in the population. Use those lines for the following uh, field tri trials or use them as the, the second cycle um, candidates in the crossing drugs. Okay. So overall, uh, the, our selection target is to increase halfway induction rate and right, to increase it as higher as possible. But on the other hand, because we can apply DH technology in inducer line development, so we would like to have more halfway, uh, inducer halfways by C1 inducer. So we would like to have the induction Inducibility as higher as as higher as 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 possible. So the several uh, candidates of those lines are showing here. Uh, they all have the higher induction rate and higher inducibility. But but uh, it will have a problem about the high level inducers because they will have the self induction issue. You can, sh you can see here uh, uh, with the high level, uh, with the high level inducers, they can, they will produce a bunch, uh, produce so many uh, inducer half points in the field. So in this, in this uh, specific DH line, they produce more than 30% uh, half points within this plots. So it will have, it will uh, cause a problem because those haploids cannot have the pollen shedding. It means that they cannot do the seed increase and use those pollen to do the haploid induction. So, okay. Uh, 
seems like we we encounter a, a double each sort uh, problem. We cannot <laughs> increase uh, induction rate so high uh, as 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 our target. So should we keep ourselves in the safe zone? Safe zone um, just maintain the haploid induction rate at the recent high reasonable high level and or we should come up with another genetic approach to improve to to solve this problem i don't know okay but <laughs> yeah but in our lab we have the a specific line gf1 it had a spontaneous haploid genome doubling a major gene, a major QTL on chromosome 5, SHGD1. So the idea is that if we introgress the SHGD1 into inducer genetic background, we can solve uh, this problem because uh, the inducers haploids, they can have the pollen shed. So we can, at, at this scenario, we can have the inducer haploids have the pollen shedding in the field. So we don't have to worry about if we have the higher level inducers, um, their haploids cannot have the pollen shed. So, uh, uh, so now uh, th this research project started at uh, 2019 summer. So now we already have um, uh, nine uh, inducer with SHGD gene in this uh, in this season. So uh, in, in the winter nursery. So in the summer nursery, uh, nursery we are going to use them uh, to investigate their uh, induction rate and uh, chromosome doubling ability construct with their uh, parents to figure out the interaction between the haploid induction rate and chromosome doubling ability. Because inducers are going to have of the genome with uh, two others genome. Uh, yeah, but the, the SHGD gene is going to double the genome. So it's kind of conflict trait. So yeah. So this is going to figure out uh, what will be happened in this summer. So this is my summary for my talk. Uh, with the DH technology and genomic selection approach, it can benefit to explore more the several allele of the haploid induction ability. Also, it can improve the agronomy traits in a big population. Also, the genomic selection seems like a, a promising approach once you have a very big uh, breeding population without a mimic source. Also, as you, uh, the, this, this figure shows that the haploid induction rate measurement is really uh, time consuming and laborious. Yeah, we have to measure every single kernel by row I to sorting the haploids out. So it's really time consuming. Also, uh, in, uh, in so far, the ge genomic selection model can be further improved by increase the uh, chaining population size. Because now we just have a one, 158 individual in the chaining population. However, uh, it should be considered about uh, the, the cost of the genotyping. And uh, we should keep our pheno phenotyping as uh, consi consistently precise. So overall, the superior line we select uh, by the genomic, uh, by genomic selection, we, uh, by the GDD value, we will read evaluate in the field in this summer again to validate the genomic selection accuracy.
Okay, so I would like to thank uh, uh, Dr. Thomas Ruberstad and the Wushu that gave me so many, uh, so many good uh, suggestions and feedbacks and help. Also, the lab members in our lab, uh, Elizabeth, Tanner, Tyler, and the undergrad helpers, without their help, I cannot do my, do my research project uh, by myself. Also, I would like to appreciate the funding from USDA and the, 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 the the support from the double high point facility and the Baker uh, Center for Prime Breeding at Iowa State. Thank you. It's all my presentation. I have three questions, uh -huh. uh, not quite directly related. Um, mm -hmm. The first one is referring to your prediction accuracy of GFAF. Your rep one, now also your rep one is rep two is only showing marginal differences, but it is fairly consistent across different traits. Um, have you checked um, what might have you from what might cause this? For example, the trigger effect. Rep one collect by one student, the other one rep two collect by the other student. Okay, so it's first one, right? Okay. Uh, actually, those traits are measured by myself, even though I have my helper. But the reason, <laughs> the, write down the numbers is all by myself. So I think they don't have. Uh, I, I'm trying to minimize the 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 error by by human. Yeah. Okay. So in your pre analysis, there's no rapid feedback. I'm not showing that here, but uh, they are, that is not significantly okay. different. Just curious what my cause is different. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not so consistent because in print high and uh, induction rate, the second one is higher than first one block. But in the in the CGBD at the browsing time, the second replicate is lower than first one. Yeah. Uh, my second question is regarding with your using different uh, prediction model. So you mentioned that you use RPHS. Uh, is that just an R block using switch using a Gaussian kernel, or are you using some different approach? Uh, actually, I just show up the. The GS model, yeah, with, G yeah, yeah G G block, uh, G block based uh, alphabet model. But I did, I just tried the first two models okay. in my research okay. because I just have a a small training population set. Okay. Um, the last question is regarding with your training set. Mm -hmm. um, so right now you're using. Well, but based on the size, it looks like your training size is much larger than your testing size. Have you tried to switch to a different approach? Like just use like 30 percent of your population as a training size and 70 percent as your testing testing size. Excuse me. So, so now your training size, your training size mm -hmm. is larger than your testing size. Oh no. My 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 channeling population is smaller. Oh, your training side is larger. Yeah, here. Yeah. And I think your testing set is 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 is, is, is in my understanding is this this size. Okay. Okay. Two hundred twenty one. Okay. Yeah. Without phenotyping. Okay. Go back to the the, the view layout map that you just showed. With uh, with in the input input uh, screenshot, your input map, the photo that you show them how you lay out your view layout. In the, in the oh, okay, layout. okay, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. 
uh, it looks like your training set is modern. The purple is testing. Right? <laughs> Oh, the purple, the purple plug is the donor. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Sorry. I misunderstood. Yeah. yeah, you know the donor we yeah, yeah, using, yeah, yeah, yeah. we are used for the induction rate test. Yeah, yeah. So your training set is actually much longer than, uh, your testing set is actually much longer than your training set. Okay, yeah. sounds good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great talk, thanks. Uh, I have one question related to his first question, and that's exactly that. Mm -hmm. I don't understand, but go back. <laughs> I don't understand why you are applying your you know, selection model in blocks if you have the same genotypes, or do you have different genotypes in block one and block two, and that's the reason that you apply your model within block. Uh, okay. Yeah, because it's it's my first time to apply ge genomic selection in inducer development. So I would like to have a solid data to change the GS model. So that is the reason why we have two replicates with same genotypes. Okay. Yeah. So keep in mind that in the end of the day, we're simply replicating our genotypes to have a better adjusted mean, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're trying to remove the, the noise Yes. So I recommend you focus just on the entry mean basis and not in blocks. Because we, if you are applying your model in blocks, that's informative. But in the end of the day, what matters is the adjusted mean when you take off the residual, the variation that doesn't explain the trade. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, that's my, my first comment. And now I have a couple of comments related to your half point inertia rate. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned that in your model, you, you filter for uh, math for 5%. Even that there are not a lot of QTLs that explain this trait, uh, try to filter for a maximum of 1%. This might give you better results in your you know, selection model for that trait. And furthermore, given that you have multiple traits, I think 5 or 6, right? If those traits are uh, related with uh, half life induction rate, you might also try a multiple trait genomic selection model because this might give you better results in the end of the day. And uh, uh, lastly, uh, related to your RR blood model, uh, which under some conditions is exactly the same as G blood, but this is not always true. Uh, given the genetic architecture of that trait, uh, I'm expecting that uh, different sort of models might do a better job than our blood, for example, base B. Try to dig a little bit deeper. Yeah, yeah. Well. Actually, I, I tried base B in my prediction, but for those two, uh, for the hypo induction rate, they are similarly, they are, they are similar, not quite different. And, sorry for two, but me, last comment. Uh, when you are working in your models, try to see what is the genetic relationship between your training population. This is very, very important. Oh, yeah. So I use this dental ground to, to visualize uh, because I randomly sampling uh, the, the DHY from, from the breeding population. So in this dental ground, you can see is kind of, they are, they are, they are, they are, they, 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 they don't show the specific in, in, in a cluster. Yeah, they are spread out in this dental group. So it means that my channel population is kind of represent to whole breeding population. I have a I have a plant physiology question. Mm -hmm. All of your phenotypes you're collecting really make a lot of sense, but why are you looking at the root color? That one doesn't make any sense to me. Why why root colors? Is it because a lot of anthocyanins accumulate in roots? Oh yeah, because um, <laughs> because 
most of the time we use the the color on the current on the embryo to select the haploids. But if it, but sometimes some gene process they they will replace the R1 novel gene expression on the kernel. So it means that we cannot use the purple color on kernel to sorting the sort the haploid out in by raw eyes. But the blue color is dominant gene controlled by PL1. So we can plant it at the seedling stage, we can select the haploids. Yeah, that is the reason why I major the blue color. So, a follow-up question with regards to that. Don't jump in. Have you considered 